Kevin, when you have that all in sustaining cost and you're aiming at eight or nine million ounces per year, you're able to weather this storm should the price continue to get tamped down yet. What, what happens if we do have $50 or $100 or more silver at some point, or if there is some sort of reset where we get a big number, what, what, is, what does that look like? Well, I mean, this just becomes a, a, a printing machine. Uh, you know, okay. it's, it's a license to print money. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics. And I'm quite excited to welcome in Kevin Drover of Arcana Silver, especially because now that Kevin's been on the show a couple of times and getting closer and closer to production, uh, certainly an exciting time, especially with the uh, hyperinflation campaign that is being spread around the globe by central bankers and certainly putting a floor under the price of silver. So, Kevin, great to have you here at this particular time. How are you today? Great to be here, Chris. Thanks for having me again. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to chatting with you a bit. Well, I'm excited to have you here today because... Here we see Arcana Silver. You had an update yesterday on July 7th um, with initial assay results and also a restart progress update. So can you walk us through the news and what we're looking at here? Well, yeah, I guess the news is, of course, uh, you know, uh, we're uh, very near production. Um, the, uh, we just accessed the uh, main vein that we're going to be mining and uh, Obviously, we're very pleased with the results of, uh, of uh, you know, what we found there when we cross-cut the vein. So, you know, we're looking at roughly uh, 38 ounces per ton, uh, over two and a half feet. And we were expecting something in the neighborhood of 24 ounces over 1.4 feet. So that's, uh, that's quite nice. And then as part of that two and a half feet, we had uh, a half a foot of uh, 0.6 feet, as a matter of fact, of over 85 ounces per ton. So uh, uh, if you like silver uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're a silver company, uh, we're heading for production here pretty quick and things are starting to uh, brighten up uh, from our company perspective. Well, I know you're getting pretty close and perhaps could you walk folks through any parts of the timeline that are known and any color that you can shed on that? Well, yeah, you know, we're well, very well along advanced. Uh, we're looking at putting, uh, we, we thought we would be putting ore uh, through the middle, you know, the middle of July kind of thing. Uh, we've been delayed a little bit, uh, but we're still looking at putting ore through the mill before the end of this month. And uh, the, uh, we're still ramping up during the month of August, uh, cash flow positive in September and at full production of 275 uh, tons per day. Uh, you know, with a, uh, uh, that equates to about a three and a half million ounce producer on an annualized basis kind of thing. So, uh, you know, things are, things are going uh, really well. We're still slightly under budget, a little tiny bit behind the schedule, but uh, we're going to make, uh, you know, the numbers in terms of uh, full production through August and September. Well, that's certainly good to hear. And I, I know a lot of people get caught up sometimes on the timeline, but in the grand scheme of things, as long as things are moving forward, I mean, sometimes it's better to do them carefully. Does a month or two, what would you say there? Is that that important in the end or what, what would you say? Well, well of course. I, I mean, you, you, want, you want to start up so that you can have a consistent run on, uh, you know, going, uh, going forward. You don't want to be up and down and, and, uh, uh, you know, having all kinds of problems and whatnot. So, you know, we've been very methodical about our approach to this startup and uh, we've been doing it right. You know, uh, we, we put uh, um, schedules out there. You know, if we miss our schedule by two weeks, I, I think we'd be one of the better ones in the industry uh, that uh, only miss by two weeks kind of thing. So I'm pretty pleased with the way things have gone here. Uh, you know, we've still hit uh, production through the mill uh, in, uh, in July, we'll uh, good production in August and September, and we'll be off to the races. When, when we get going, we'll be running uh, on a sustainable basis going forward. The whole point, uh, you know, with these narrow veins mines uh, is that you've got to have your development done out in front of you in the mine. And uh, we've been doing that. 
we we're stockpiling ore as we speak. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I I feel we're in pretty good shape here as a company. Yeah, and certainly, at least from my perspective as an investor, uh, if you have who knows how much more money will be printed in those two weeks or two months or whatever it end up may being. Uh, anything you can share about the vein intercepts grade? Yeah, the, 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 grade, uh, the, the grades that we hit are, uh, you know, as I said there a few minutes ago, we were expecting something in the neighborhood of 24 ounces per ton over a vein width of 1.4 feet in that area where we were, uh, you know, cross cutting the vein, but we actually, uh, got grades of 38 ounces per ton over two and a half feet of width. Now that's a lot more metal uh, than you know what we were expecting. So these are really uh, fantastic grades. Uh, they bode very well. Some of the grades that we've got since we've released these uh, uh, grades uh, this morning, uh, we've gotten some others in that are equally as good uh, we will press release those uh, probably next week once we uh, get final assays and all of that. But right now we are looking extremely good. Uh, the um, the grades are above our expectation, put it that way. Well, that's certainly always nice when things come out above and beyond what you were expecting. Uh, can you give us an update in the cash position and date of cash flow positive? Yeah, well, we're in uh, really good shape. Uh, we've got $23 million in the bank uh, right now with a couple of weeks to go to, to uh, getting into production. Uh, so we're, we've got a very nice contingency uh, at this stage. Uh, virtually, you know, all of our um, uh, capital has been spent already. Uh, we've got a few pieces of equipment to install. So our $23 million is going to leave us with a pretty pretty good cushion. So we do not anticipate having to go back uh, to the equity markets for any kind of additional funding. Uh, we feel that we're, we're cashed up and uh, our contingency uh, is quite good. Well, that certainly is a nice position to be in. Uh, and we touched on some of these before, but uh, maybe we'll recap them. Anticipated date of first shipment of ore. We're looking at the uh, first week of August uh, of having our first lot to leave the, uh, uh, leave the mine site. So we'll be shipping concentrates during that first week to 10 days of August. And that schedule has always been there. And we, we're pretty sure that we're still gonna be able to meet that schedule. Uh, Tratagura is our off taker. So they will pay us 95% of, of the metal content of our concentrates at our gate. So we don't, uh, our financing or working capital requirement is gonna be uh, uh, very low. Okay, uh, that sounds good. And can you comment on the ramp up plan to reach the full capacity at the mill? Well, what we uh, envision is that we're gonna be ramping up uh, late July, we'll be putting first door through, uh, and then through the month of August, we are looking at uh, settling around uh, an average of about 110 to 115 tons per day. But that'll ramp up by before the end of August, we'll be up at the, the full 270 tons per day, uh, and then full production at 270 tons per day uh, through September and beyond. Now the plan there is to, uh, we'll start up settling at the 270 tons a day, and then you know look at our metallurgy, at our cost, at our productivities, make sure we're on good solid ground. Come uh, January, February of 2022, we're looking at ramping up another 100 tons uh, so that we get up to 400 tons. That gives us, that takes us from three and a half million ounces a year producer to about four and a half million ounce producer for 2022 on an annualized basis. Uh, so that's what we're looking in the near term. And then beyond that, you know, we have a mill that's capable of 500 tons a day. So beyond that, we want to get up to 500 tons a day. Uh, and we'll be looking at doing that in early 2023. That would get us to that five and a half million uh, ounces out of the uh, revenue of Virginia's mine. And don't forget, we, we still have the Shafter mine in Texas that we're working on. We hope to be able to get a feasibility study completed on the Shafter project by mid 2022. 
and then make a production decision. If that's a positive feasibility study, then we would uh, look to get it into production at the rate of about two and a half to three million ounces a year of, of silver. So that puts us in that mid-tier producer uh, status. And I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's where we should be as a, as, a, uh, uh, as a silver company in the near term. And we can do that all organically in-house. We don't have to go do mergers or anything. Uh, with that. So over the next two to three years, uh, I anticipate that we're going to be beating on that eight to nine million ounce uh, as a producer. Wow. Well, that was going to be my next question. At full capacity, is that the number eight to nine million ounces per year? Is that, is that the target? That's what we're shooting for over the next few years. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, that should be fun to watch. Uh, what's the all-in sustaining cost on that, Kevin? Well, all-in sustaining cost on uh, the revenue of Virginia is going to come in on a silver equivalent basis. We're probably going to be in that uh, $12 range, $12.50. $12 I mean, we did see some price appreciation, uh, uh, cost uh, inflation and whatnot. Uh, but uh, even with that, you know, we're going to be pretty low cost uh, producer. And of course, as we produce more metal, uh, you know, our costs are not going to go up proportionately. They will go up a little bit because of labor. But, uh, you know, that cost may go down uh, a little bit overall. So at $25, $26, uh, we're looking at throwing off a lot of cash. Uh, even at three and a half million ounces a year, that's based on only 270 tons a day at $26 an ounce we're going to be very close, right around $50 million of after-tax free cash flow on an annualized basis. Pretty Sorry. good reason to own the company. <laughs> just just uh, as I'm sitting here listening, I'm imagining what Treasury investors, maybe after next uh, week's CPI inflation print, we'll see if it cracks 6%, who knows. But I wonder what would happen if people that understood the true risk of US dollar risk, US treasury risk, and then understood why so many people like myself are big advocates of silver. And I guess, Kevin, when you have that all in sustaining cost and you're aiming at eight or 9 million ounces uh, per year in production, you're able to weather this storm should the price continue to get tamped down by US regulatory agencies and banks Yet, what, what happens if we do have $50 or $100 or more silver at some point, or if there is some sort of reset where we get a big number? What, what, is, what does that look like? Well, I mean, this just becomes a, a, a printing machine. Uh, oh, you know, okay. it, it's a license to print money uh, at, uh, uh, you know, with the mines that we have. We're so low cost. Uh, it's, um, you know, it just goes straight to the bottom line. If you see $50, I mean, you know, there's, there's even bigger numbers than that out there, right? Uh, and if that happens, of course, uh, you know, it's, um, it's huge dollars uh, for us. And, uh, you know, if, if you think silver is going to go, if you think that the money system is not going to be in the future as it was in the past, and you like silver, uh, then I think we're a good place uh, to look uh, to uh, to see some upside uh, and, and uh, to make some money on a go forward basis. I think for starters, we're very undervalued, um, and uh, we've got wind at our back uh, in terms of the uh, silver price. I don't know of anybody that thinks that silver shouldn't be fifty dollars an ounce. Uh, so uh, um, uh, you know, uh, it'll come to fruition. It's a matter of time, I believe. And, uh, you know, with our low cost of production, with our very high grade mine, you know, uh, what mine is around has got uh, 2000 uh, uh, grams per ton or 80 ounces per ton of, uh, of uh, feed to your mill. And with the ability to take that from, uh, you know, almost double your production with almost no capital cost on, on a go forward basis. So I, I think that our account is in a pretty good spot right now. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to reaping the benefits of, uh, of that as, as well as, uh, you know, as I know many of our investors uh, will as well.
Well, there you go. Checkmate by Kevin Drover of Orkana Silver. Um, I don't really know what the counter argument is to that. By all means, uh, people do buy treasuries. So I'm just a guy on YouTube, consult your legal financial advisors and all of those great things. But Kevin, if people are saying, wow, that actually makes a lot more sense than piling into bubble securities, how could them or their financial advisors, if they'd like to have someone call on their behalf, most easily get their questions answered about Arcana Silver? Yeah, well, they can either call me, uh, you know, my, uh, my email address, or just send me an email. We can set up a phone call, kdrover at orcana.com or Gary Lindsay. Uh, Gary is uh, on our website. His phone number is there. You can call him anytime. Either one of us, uh, uh, there's also a, uh, uh, an email to at info or can I add info that goes directly to Gary and myself. Uh, we'll be happy to get back and uh, answer any questions that anybody might have. Well, Kevin, I sure appreciate that. I think that's something that really is needed at this particular time in the financial markets where investors can get their questions answered, have a partnership with the management of the companies they're investing in. So I appreciate everything you're doing. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this uh, as the days, weeks, and months progress. And we'll look forward to checking back in with you again soon, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris, very much.